And I think he's the one, maybe together with me, who, who can have ideas about how we make this character, we help this character with a voice, with the colors of the voice mm. and, mm. Uh, you know, piano, forte, and things like that. And um, yeah, but it's still a work in progress. We still have five, mm. five weeks to the premiere and it can change from a moment to each other. It can change up to the premiere. Hey, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Are you? Um, you are now in. I'm in Aarhus. Yeah. I suppose it's they say Aarhus, <laughs> and oh, which, mm. yeah, this is the town where the Danish National Opera, yeah, uh, works and produces a lot of productions, mm. and they already had a modern opera in this season in August. And this is the second opera, which will be a bigger production than the other modern opera. And it's Aida by Verdi. Yeah. Okay. And how far are you from Copenhagen then now? Uh, I don't know exactly in kilometers, but I know that the train, it's uh, like three hours and oh. 10 minutes or something, 15 minutes okay. so it's by quite train. A, yeah. yeah. So it's quite a distance. Yes. And... And this opera house, do they do they stage mostly modern operas? No, no, they they do uh, actually more classical opera than modern. Yeah. Like uh, last season, even if it was Corona already, they had a huge production of Rigoletto. And mm -hmm. uh, what is also very interesting here is they don't do the that's the production that they produce in Arcus yeah. at the beginning, but they start in Odense or in other theaters in yeah. Denmark, uh, like this time. And then they end in Aarhus. So the last performances are in Aarhus. Oh, I see. So are they, so, and, yeah, are they touring then? They're touring and they have for uh, almost for each town where they have a, um, a performance, they have another orchestra. And so in total for this, AIDA would be like five orchestras from the whole Denmark. Really? Yeah, including um, a very good, uh, very famous orchestra from Odense, uh, with which I already sang a concert uh, version of uh, Siegfried mm -hmm. um, some years ago with the maestro Alexander Bedernikov, which unfortunately died in October last year because of Corona. Oh, really? And he was only 56, yeah. Oh. And uh, with this orchestra, we will have the premiere of AIDA on the um, 15th of October. And then the second performance is the next day, on the 16th. Okay. And it's going to be a very modern production. Really? Yeah. In, in what way? It, it, tell me about this production. So the director is from Germany. His name is Roland Schwab. And he's quite famous. He did a lot of productions in Germany and not only in Germany, in the whole world. And, and including famous opera uh, in, in uh, München, the Bayerische Staatsoper. Mm. And uh, he thought of the, of the concept of this opera where the story actually almost stays the same but it's getting to our times or something time close to us and maybe maybe really our century so the 21st century and it's very practical done so that we can go with it in in, in tour on tour mm -hmm. and it's only one big room a golden room a quadratish how to say quadrat yeah. Um, yeah. yeah and it's golden and it can get bigger it can get bigger and oh. Yeah, by growing, I mean, the opening, the, the, the part which is up, it can open. Yeah. And it would be very interesting because the characters, many produ produ productions of Aida have very static characters mm -hmm. and sometimes turns to be like a concert opera in costumes. Oh, I and this, this situation is not the same. So the characters, they have very, very precise uh, things to do. And uh, my character is getting like very Mephist Mephistophelic, so very evil character. And uh, he's trying to, not trying, he's really uh, having uncontrolled uh, Radames 
uh, tenor, and he's a has a has a strange relationship with the uh, even Amneris. Mm -hmm. You know, it's this triangle of the Amneris of Amneris, Aida, and Radames. Radames loves Aida. Aida loves Radames. Amneris loves Radames, but Radames doesn't love Amneris, and oh, okay. it's quite complicated. And uh, I think it will be very a very exciting production. The costumes are very modern, and um, I'm looking very much forward to it. Yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm just wanting to ask you now: Is it for you very different to playing the traditional uh, Aida to this modern production? Mm, yes, in a way, it's it's mm. very different because um, I did only two productions of Ram, Ramfis in Aida until now. That's the only role I sang here because many bassists they sing also the king, but they didn't have the chance to sing the king until now. Actually, my debut in Aida was supposed to be with the king, uh, yeah. with uh, Luciano Pavarotti in yeah. Royal Opera House Covent Garden, <gasps> and. <laughs> Yes, and it was a long time ago. I have to remember when it was. I think it was somewhere close to 2000s or before yeah. 2000. Mm. So not yet in this century. Yeah, yeah. And uh, unfortunately, it has been, I mean, the whole Verdi Festival in which this Aida as a part, as a big part, mm. was seen as a new production. This Verdi Festival of the Royal Opera House has been in that huge season cancelled completely. Yeah, no. I, th I think it was 2000. It was really 2000, really? so the beginning of the century. <gasps> so unfortunately, I lost my chance to sing with Luciano Pavarotti. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah okay, and let's to yeah, return but you, to but you, No, but, but this, is, uh, this is an interesting story. This is something yes, that yeah. it's actually special, yeah, to think you, you... I had even a contract. I had the contract and it was signed. Really? So, well, you yes. have the you have the evidence of that. Yeah, I have still <laughs> have the contract somewhere yeah. in my house. And uh, okay, but to that's to amazing. Ramfis. Yeah, no, yeah. but that's that's um yeah, and unfortunately, I mean, he passed away. So um, quite that, fast, um, actually, yeah. after this, unfortunately, oh, really? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and um, uh, Ramfis, I did it uh, many times in the state opera. Which is actually a beautiful production of Nicolas Joel. Uh, and um, it's, I mean, the costumes are beautiful, the stage, everything. But um, how can I say? It's not so much to do. Many scenes are very statical, which yeah. can be very impressive also. Mm. But this is not the case in this I production now. Yeah. Because, first of all, we are not anymore in like 3,000 years ago. Yeah. We are now in this century, in now, in a world which is maybe not the, I hope not this COVID world now, but still a world with uh, with um, fake news and with um, people fighting, like, uh, unfortunately, we have these problems exactly now mm -hmm. of fighting in, in this uh, area of, of uh, the, the world. And, um, yeah. Uh, it will be totally different. It's a totally different way that I think I think about my character, mm -hmm. and it's a totally different way that I move, because mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. the way you you move like you think an Egyptian priest will move like three years, three thousand years ago, mm -hmm. and it's another way when you you feel like an, not really a priest, but yeah. some uh, sort of chief of. Uh, sector you know yeah i don't yeah. know how to say that in english uh, yeah yeah who tries to control and who tries to yeah. have influence on, on everybody and for him like i use radames it's i use radames for my purpose and if he i don't meet him anymore he can die which actually happens in the end with aida closed mm. in a sort of uh, the same room but the same room is going to be sealed and closed and they die there in this room, in this golden room. But um, now that you mentioned this, this, now I think about it, isn't it then easier to, to play this role or to sing this role? Because you can almost, you say it's, it's very much like, like it is today. So you can 
imagine yourself much easier how it is to play this role than say a king of 300 years ago or a, or a, a ruler of 300 a priest, years yeah, yeah. of a priest of yeah actually years. yeah actually it's so, easier yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and especially because uh, these are temas uh, who come a lot in films in hollywood films and everywhere and you can get your inspiration from from big actors mm -hmm. from big uh, uh, characters, people who especially used to to play uh, this, um, yeah. So it's yeah. much more easier to do and something like that. So and now you have to, of course, act also. Then you know you you sing in a way, but you have to be this character. Um, is this something that comes not very easy to you to do these acting? I mean, of course, you do that in all the operas, but I, what I mean, if you have to really um, delve into a different type of way of doing it, does it come easy to you? Yes, I think for me it's quite easy. Uh, mm -hmm. Very important that I have a discussion with uh, what the director and the director says, I would like this and I'd like him to be like that and like that. And then it's it's getting like, it's making that click and oh. I get my inspiration and I think he might be like that. And he might do these gestures and not always big gestures, but sometimes also big gestures. But yeah, I'm talking about my inspiration exactly in this situation yeah, yeah, yeah. where I found that in this kind of decoration where you just have this room, you don't have to do a lot. And mm. everything you do there, it's, it has to be, it will be seen and it will be understand in a way or another. Mm. But there are some moments where I have to put a lot of energy in this character. Oh, really? And as I said, it's very important to, to, to have these discussions with the director. The director says, I like it like that. Or he says, no, you got you got in the wrong direction. You understood me what I wanted. You didn't understand what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I think in this situation, we understand each other very well. Mm -hmm. And we can, uh, I can add something and he can say yeah i like it no i don't like it or you can like he gives also you can do that and you can do that and you can go there and surely if i do too much you say no this is too much this is not in this situation oh, yeah. That I want. yeah but now as an opera singer you have to have you have so many things to think about so now you have to also think about singing and and project projecting the voice and all of that but at this stage of the rehearsal, how much uh, do you get, uh, it, you know, uh, input from from the director to, to about the voice, about how you sing, or is it at this point uh, more about the the acting of it? I think it's more about the acting, mm -hmm. and uh, we had some rehearsals with the conductor also, oh, okay. which is from Sweden. And uh, he's very nice, and he he's very open to our um, ideas, and he has his own his own idea, own idea, and I think he is the one, maybe together with me, who who can have ideas about how we make this character, we help this character with the voice, with the colors of the voice, mm. and mm. Uh, you know, piano, forte, and things like that, and. Um, yeah, but it's still a work in progress. We still have five, mm. five weeks to the premiere and it can change from a moment to each other. It can change up to the premiere. Really? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And well, surely the, the, the director, he can also say, oh, I think this moment you, you do to, your voice doesn't sustain so much what I want. The voice is too soft. Or you can do here more softly so that it uh, close, uh, gets more from inside, you know, from mm. the soul. Mm. And yeah, it's a work together of three persons, first of all, so me with the director and the conductor and with all other colleagues, mm. because we have to have a relationship within oh, wow. us. Yeah. yeah. And everybody has to know what you want to do and to interact with you and have a reaction. So it's highest and with the choir also, because Aida, it's mm -hmm. very much a choir opera. So we have a lot of scenes mm -hmm. with big choir, small choir, men, men choir, mixed choir, everything. Yeah. Yeah. So the choir is actually until the last moment uh, when Aida and Radames uh, supposedly die after this 
singing their love to it in the end of the opera. You hear the choir and a Mary singing together with the choir in supposedly outside of the stage. Maybe in this stage they will be on the stage, we don't know. Um, <laughs> in this staging. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So um in in these five weeks you really get to know each other and really um bond with each other and connect with each other because you work then so closely with each other. Uh, do you find Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. do you yeah. find that it's um it's something part of your job that that you like that you you sort of connect with all these people and you go on and and you have that memory of that time that you work together and for, of course probably re-meeting each other again in some production. Yeah. Yeah, this is our job. This is uh, the job of a singer. I mean, yes, for many years I was uh, fixed in the state opera and I had also in the state opera a lot of uh, fixed people that I met every day and also a lot, lot of other people who came as, as a guest singers and conductors and directors. But I mean, in, in, in effect, it's our job always mm -hmm. to interact with new people, or to meet people which we already sang before. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, the um, tenor, the Radames, in my cast, because there are two casts, the Radames is he's coming from Romania, and actually he's born in Moldova, but he used to live in Romania. And we sang together years ago in the oh, opera in Bucharest. Yeah. And I was uh, title role of Don Giovanni by Mozart, and he was uh, the tenor, Don Ottavio. And now we meet in a completely different situation, completely different piece and different music. Yeah. And 20 years later, it was a long time. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So, and that's, yeah. that's the situation. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like you force yourself to like these people. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know, for myself, I can speak for myself. I'm normally a very positive person and I always like the persons I meet. Oh, it's really? <laughs> very rarely that I really have a problem with somebody. Yeah. It almost never happens. Yeah. yeah. Well, you have that type of um, very easygoing character. You know, you, you yeah. um, I think you, you uh, project that, you know, that you are not a, a complicated person. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, yeah, in a way, uh, yeah. The character of Ralph is in not only in this production, but almost in all productions. Yeah. He's supposed to be very evil, which is yeah. not me in real life. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I have to change myself when I'm on a stage. And yeah. I think people actually, it's very interesting because people realize that you are not as this character. I mean, they, they always realize, oh, this guy is so nice and he's so cool and he's yeah. really a friendly guy. Yeah. But when he gets on the stage, they are like, oh my God, we yeah. are afraid about yeah. <laughs> So that is good, it's good for me because it means I really could fake it so much that the people yeah. really believed it. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you can, and you can um, e experience that little bit of being an evil guy Although you are yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> having got a lot of power or something. <laughs> yeah. But um, so tell me about the costume. So it's it's every so it's like we so it's like modern day cost uh, uh, clothes basically. Yes, yes, but they had something uh, like um, a little like Hollywood modern oh, films. Okay. Yeah. They have something like, uh, it was very interesting because um, when I saw the drawings and the photos for, for the costumes, we had some examples, like for Amneris, they had an example. It has to be sort of like Grace Jones, you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> Character, yeah. yeah. And the middle one, there were like three characters drawn, and the middle one looked like uh, Brigitte Nielsen and the way of she's yeah. acting. And, and then yeah. you have an idea and yeah. for me, there were not uh, well-known artists or, or actors, but it looks very interesting. It looks something like Matrix in this direction, my costume. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a lot of leather and uh, black and uh, no. uh, I have a, sk a skirt, yeah, a long skirt, like oh, yeah. uh, gothic, gothic skirt. Oh, style. yeah. 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 And um, very interesting because in a certain moment I will 
take out this black uh, leather thing and then yeah. I remain in a vest which probably would also be leather in a vest you can see my arms my arms will be naked and a little of the of the, the chest and yeah. uh, it changes and right. then and in the end I will have an addition to the costume which is very interesting because it's um, uh, um, uh, uh, one of the gods from Egypt, mm -hmm. only the head. And this is the goddess, the goddess of, of death, that people. Mm -hmm. And that's what I put in the end of my head in the moment where, where Aida and Tradamus are dying together. Oh, okay. So it has some connotation, some uh, a little well, about Egypt mm -hmm. also. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, and it and it progresses uh, or it changes as the story goes along. So it, it yes, yeah, it fun. changes also in function of what I need because yeah. there is a moment when I I said I have to take my jacket off and then with this naked arms and this and I have to uh, look in a, as a as a sort of rock star and. Oh, okay. Evil rock star or something oh, okay. like that. <laughs> will, you, will you please post pictures on Facebook? I would so love Yeah, to sure. If, if I yeah. do good, if I, I would love to. <laughs> and I will have blonde hair. And, uh, oh, sort of really? Wow. A little longer. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you'll have an idea what it is like to be blonde then. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I knew it from my childhood because I used really? to be very blonde when I was a really? child. Really? Yeah. And long hair. I used to have many years long hair. Sometimes yeah. I think I had like almost, almost one meter long hair. So really? <laughs> it's not a problem for me. It's something I knew very well oh, from okay. my life until now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, so I, I decided to, it was too difficult to, to um, I would say, the German flagon of this uh, oh, long okay. hair. Yeah, and then I said, No, I would cut my hair because it was really too difficult to really? take care so of it. How, how old were you when you cut it? I think I was 30 years old. Oh, yeah, okay, 30. yeah. So, when I decided, and yeah. I said, I said uh, it was used yeah. many times for staging my hair. Mm. So, like as the Rastro, I did like 40 performances in Switzerland in the same production. Uh, they always used my long hair and I had a, had a lot of things in my hair and golden sand and everything. Yeah. And at a certain moment, I said, okay, now this uh, Zarastro is finished. I can cut my hair so, uh. <laughs> to see how it is when I have some, I have more uh, freedom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because long hair, I mean, I, I think I don't have long hair, but I think it, it's not as easy as handling short hair. You know, no, yeah. it is not. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I'm very excited about this uh, storyline and, and or, or this, this the way they do this production. I actually spoke to um, an opera singer in South Africa the other day, and they did the Carmen. Um, uh, they adapted it so that it plays out in a township uh, in South Africa, and it's it's also. Uh, you know, it's the same music, but it's just the story is just adapted to that. And sometimes I wonder if that's maybe also, uh, a, uh, you know, an, a good way. I love the traditional, the really traditional big stagings and the things. But um, I think it's also interesting to do it sometimes in the, the modern operas, if you do it like that, where you can, when there's characters that would be, very much relatable for us in this time and for people who don't necessarily go to the opera um, can then sort of make that a different connection uh, to the opera mm. then. Yes, absolutely. I know what you mean. And um, that's a, it's a big current now and a lot of people are trying to do that and mm. there are many productions. Uh, they, I can't say they get minimalistic, but they are not because they are not minimalistic, mm -hmm. but they reduce a lot on the stage and mm -hmm. they try to get to younger people yeah. through some in interesting uh, stagings. Uh, I know a lot of singers, colleagues of mine, or older or even younger, that they don't mm -hmm. want to play in these modern productions 
But I think it's for this for the moment it's not possible to go without having this no. experience. Mm, yeah. yeah, and it's true that um, some people are. Uh, I mean, maybe from the younger people getting in the opera, they don't really want to see this old kind of production. They want to mm. see something new, uh, mm. and this make them more excited. Make them more think, oh, opera it's a very cool thing, mm. even mm. if we do have the music composed like 200 years 300 years ago mm -hmm. baroque music maybe even longer and still we can do something modern where people say okay especially mm -hmm. young people probably they can say it's a cool thing and yeah. i would like to see more because i, I know um, i don't want to speak bad about um all the people who used to see the very classical production but many of them they still they still say Oh, 20, 30, 40 years ago, it was yeah. so beautiful. And everything was so classic. And we had Carlos and we had Corelli and we had all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. They were great. These people were great. And they were great singers and they were great actors. Uh, they were still people. <laughs> but I yeah. mean, yeah. the thing, the things, I mean, they, they are no, not gods or things like that. Yeah. But the thing is that we have to move on and we moved on. Yeah. And we have our stars today, like lots of big stars, including mm -hmm. Matrepko, and and mm -hmm. she's the one who can do everything. She can sing modern production, she can sing classical production. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I think it's it's uh, this uh, almost this um, idea of of it as being you know so so how can i put it but it's it's that idea of these stars and it's they are so put up on a pedestal and made as like you say like they are gods but it's and and the opera as well and and i think that maybe made this distance between you know that some people felt the opera they couldn't relate or they couldn't understand and they couldn't get the story and it was very much uh, looked as old-fashioned or or just for yes, a yes, yeah, that's what I mean uh, also. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and I myself, as I say, I love these old because I love these old costumes and I love these old big productions. But the more I started speaking to to singers and and um, musicians, and and you start hearing a, the the what is the story behind or what is the idea behind or why is this made in this way then uh, it also changes how you then look at uh, these new productions you know and um i think yeah, if it's definitely. a new pro i think if it's if it's done in a way to to almost make sense or that it's the story makes sense then it's also different than just to do it in a modern modern way just to do it in a modern way you know what i mean this is yeah, the, yeah. it has to I, it has to make sense in a way yeah Mm -hmm. And now talking to you, I remember of uh, the story from 19th century, like a very famous story, the Carmen, yeah. because at that moment it was very modern. They were wearing the costumes of that time. And it was very, I mean, people didn't want to see uh, a prostitute on the stage, moving yeah. and acting like one. Yeah. And that's why it was uh, not a success. It was a fiasco mm -hmm. because people were not open at that moment to see something mm -hmm. like that on the stage and then also Traviata well it was a success mm -hmm. but the people also couldn't understand why we have to see these people wearing on the stage the same what we wear now yeah know? because it yeah. was a contemporary uh, theater piece at that moment mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and uh, well you see that the, the things are repeating the stories mm -hmm. are repeating because some people say the same things. Why should I go to the opera and see people walking on the stage like in jeans? Yeah. But yeah. I mean, why not? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. it's our life. It's uh, our world. Yeah. yeah. And it can be like that, and it can be a classical thing mm -hmm. for people who who wants to wants to see these classical productions. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah, the gusti was yeah. non discutando, non discutando. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's yeah. very, very difficult to please everybody. Yeah. But you say, why not? And yeah. you look in the history, and you see that there were misunderstanding mm -hmm. in the history yeah. of the opera. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
Well, it's, it's so. like that with everything. It was like that with design and with architecture. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's always uh, misunderstood, but it's it's um, that's where I think art is such a wonderful way to educate because I think you are much far ahead with your thinking, and then um, you know it's it's a way of putting it out there and people starting to understand or you know see it and and try and and sort of think about it and so on. So. Um, yeah, 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 sure. I think it's always like that. It will always yeah, be yeah. like that. And I'm talking as a person who really did some modern productions where people were like, at the first moment, they were like, uh, I'm talking now about uh, the new uh, ring, uh, uh, Nibelungen ring by Wagner in Bayreuth. Uh, yeah. the, the premiere was in 2013. Now they are planning a new one next season. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it was so modern that the people were like, open mouth and really? watching and watching yeah. and thinking and thinking and then they said we think this was until now the best production of ring of the of this really? century afterwards yeah so first of all they yeah. booed the poor kind of the pure poor producer well poor producer i mean mm -hmm. maybe some producer they expect to be booed and now yeah. that what they do is very 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 uh, daring especially mm -hmm. and um and then they said maybe this was really something. Mm -hmm. It was really thought in a way that you had all what actually under what we say under this music is and what people think when they listen to this music. Mm -hmm. And well, it was a very modern production and it was mm -hmm. not the only one I did. I mm -hmm. started, I think my first very modern production was my first Wagner production. Where I was yeah. singing the Fliegende Holländer, the title role, so the Flying Dutchman. And it was in Luzerne Theater. It was mm -hmm. the first Wagner in Luzerne Theater after 40 years. They had no Wagner. Mm -hmm. And I was singing the, singing the title role. And it was so modern that the people were completely shocked and they were mm -hmm. uh, booing. And, and yeah, so, yeah they, I mean, not the singers, but the producer, yeah, yeah. The, the director. And now, when they do that production again, is it is it now acceptable? No, they didn't part? do it again oh, anymore, unfortunately. Oh, okay. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how the reaction will be today. Yeah, if they yeah. Because I saw some new productions in Bayreuth this year of a new production yeah. of of Carl Hollander. The other new production they had like um, around our ring a mm. year before the ring we did, and I was like, okay, mm. it's a uh, Something you can take it, understand it, accept it, or you can say no. I mm. close to, I yeah. close myself to understand yeah. this thing. Yeah, that's true. It's I think very it's interesting. Good. Yeah. Um, but tell me now the five weeks that you now are there. So it's an everyday rehearsals that you have. Yeah, except Sundays. We okay, and, and day, you so. have to sing now every day. Is that not heavy on your voice? Well, I mean, nobody asks you to sing the whole time full voice, but yeah, okay. surely, surely yeah. that's something that happened with the new production because it's not as um, a pure production which exists and you just go there for one week and uh, yeah. take uh, everything around and then you can mark until, until the, the, the first performance. Mm. Uh, it's not the same. It's uh, really a lot of work and... Um, it's difficult as what I said. It's, it's, it can it can sorry it can change from a moment to another. So yeah. it can okay. happen that yeah. we did something yesterday, and in two days that the, the producer, I mean the director, realized mm -hmm. no, maybe I didn't. I don't like that, and he can change. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know what he's going to do because the first time I work with him, mm -hmm. it's also possible that it stays like that, and we just. Uh, make it better oh, <laughs> to <okay>. the premiere. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. also it's a different that um the difference is that the last week so the last week before the premiere, you have really to sing a lot of full voice rehearsals because there will be a lot of orchestra rehearsals and and mm -hmm. um yeah a lot of on the stage and mm -hmm. yeah it's getting sure I'll be quite tired, more um, tired than I'm now. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you do on your spare time? Because I see it's a beautiful city. 
It is a really beautiful city. I uh, had my agent here like last week. Mm -hmm. she, she made here a visit and we went into town and I was like, wow, this is really beautiful town. And uh, mm -hmm. it's directly at the sea, which really? is also beautiful. And oh, they wow. have beautiful yeah. beaches and yeah, yeah. yeah. And I how, have what to confess I didn't go to the beach yet. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but what is the weather like there? Is it warm? It was very nice when I came here. And yeah. now we have like two, we had like two days a little colder and yeah. tomorrow will be again warm. So I can decide to go tomorrow to the beach. And I got yeah. a bicycle today <laughs> oh, for me. Yeah, yeah, so I can take my time and enjoy a little the sea. Yeah. Well, you can you you can use the the, uh, the going to the beach part when you are so tired and you have to sort of uh, get more energy, then you can go uh, and have some free time at the sea. Yeah, uh, I'm a, a sea yeah. person. I don't are like you? that much going in the, in the mountains. Sure, yeah. the mountains are also beautiful and landscapes and everything. But yeah. I'm a sea person. I mean, I really? love yeah. sea and uh, sand and water, especially. Really? All what the sea has, yeah, yeah. like waves and everything. Yeah. Okay, so you are you are sorted. You are at the right place then. I am at the right the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, sure, um, unfortunately, the water is not so warm, but yeah. it's still the sea. <laughs> well, yeah, you can still walk there and, and see the sea, at least see the sea and, and hear the sea. Yes, yeah. and yeah. enjoy. And yeah. this uh, air, always the air, is yeah. especially air, yeah. mm. with the salt and this. And I was actually very funny. It was two days ago in, in the center. I live very close to the concert house where we have the performances here in Arles. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I, I felt in the air, the sea, uh, the sea uh, really? perfume. Yeah? Yeah. And I was, mm. wow, it's coming in up mm. to the middle of the town. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. That's a, yeah. Then, then you have that feeling. Um, that you are in a that you are near the sea when when you can mm -hmm. smell or, or feel it like that yeah yeah oh Soren, this is so lovely to talk to you and uh lovely uh, to talk to yeah, you yeah and you. are you always you always ex explain so wonderfully these productions that you are doing that it makes me want to see them <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, good, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we but can it, hope that it will come on a DVD or something. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> so there's no, there's no streaming or or uh, recordings of it. As far as I know, there's no streaming, yeah. but uh, mm -hmm. you never know. Maybe no, they decide. No. Well, I will, I will catch you when you are again in Vienna and uh, on stage. Then I will definitely come and and watch you sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got today. Okay. Today I got very good news about the yeah. new contract, and but I cannot say yet. I wait to sign the contract, oh, okay. and it's a modern opera. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so that will yeah. be that will be our next conversation then. You can yeah, so contemporary know. opera actually. Okay, <laughs> you can let me know. Yeah. Soren, <laughs> have a lovely um, evening. And all the best for the, for the five weeks of rehearsing. And I'm looking forward to seeing your costume on Facebook. Yes, I will. <laughs> okay. I will show it. Surely I will show it. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, all so the best. Thank you, you Bye. too. Bye. 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 Bye.